Hello and welcome to another video from Dazzatron's Diorama Llama. And so in this new video for 2023, I wanted to introduce you, if you haven't seen them already, the Dungeons and Dragons cartoon figures from Hasbro. Now I was fortunate to have these as my Christmas present for my lovely wife. Um, and I was very, very impressed with them. I had watched a few reviews just before I opened um, my own and uh, kind of mixed reviews. Lots of people liked the look of the figures but were not too happy with the articulation. Um, in one review I saw the um, arm snapped off um, Diana, which uh, wasn't great. Um, so yeah, so I kind of, when I got these out, yeah, loved the look of them, but I was a bit worried about, um, yeah, how great they would be if there'd been a QC issues. Um, all of that was kind of put to rest once I saw a, another reviewer who kind of mentioned just kind of soaking them in water a little bit and that just kind of loosens up the joints. So I thought, yeah, I'll, I'll do that first before moving any of them. And um, actually that worked a treat. It worked really well. Um, in fact, I'll, I'll demonstrate that to you. So I've just got a bit of hot water here. So if I just take Bobby and just pop him in there for a little bit, just for, you know, a minute or so. That would just kind of loosen his joints right up. So I'm just going to do a little kind of walk through each of these figures. You can see the packaging on display there. Um, some really nice kind of retro packaging. I know some people weren't too happy that it wasn't kind of like the bubble packaging, so you couldn't see the figures inside. And I know that's part of um, Hasbro's uh, thing at the moment, trying to kind of reduce plastic waste. You know, which fair play to them. I think that's a really good thing to see that they're doing that. And to be fair, I'm happy with these boxes. I think they look fantastic. I love the the card art in the background, um, the figures. Well, should I say the kind of the photos of the figures do them justice. They look really, really good, um, and they come well packaged inside. So, in terms of cost, that's about yeah, it's about eighty pounds for the three main figures. And it was another £50 for the double set with Dungeon Master um, and Venger. Um, so they're not cheap, really. But they're a really, really lovely set. So I'm just going to take Bobby out of there. Just give him a bit of a dry. Okay, I don't know if you can see him that well. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so once you've kind of loosened him up a bit, his, artic his articulation is really, really good. So I know lots of people saying the articulation was limited, but actually, once you loosen them up a bit, you can get them into some really good poses. Got kind of double knee joints there. Got some ankle rockers as well. So you can get some really good poses with these. I think probably my only issue with this guy is um, he doesn't hold his club very easily. That tends to kind of drop out, as you can see there. Um, but they look fantastic. I mean, it's been like 40 years that we've been waiting for proper kind of Dungeons and Dragons cartoon figures. I know um, I think it's Italy, somewhere like that, you can pick up um, little PVC figures and they go for crazy amounts at the moment. And I think it's Iron Studios did a recent kind of statue set which you could put together and form this really kind of cool scene with Tiamat the Dragon and Venger and the other characters. But again, really really expensive so to get i know i said this was 120 pounds for all of these but do you know what that's an affordable price really in fact i paid that recently for a mezco wolverine um and i have to say i'm 
way happier with these as a set than what I am with the Wolverine. It's not a bad figure, the Mesco Wolverine, but um, I think this is a better use of £120, if I'm being absolutely honest. So just have a quick look at some of the other figures in the range. So here is Dungeon Master, looking really cool. Very limited articulation on this guy for obvious reasons. Obviously you can't see his legs. We've got Hank over here. He comes with his bow. Again, really nice head sculpt. Lovely details in the figures. Obviously, the, the you know the more simplified because it's um, more cartoon accurate. Just stand him up there. And um, with Bobby, you also get Uni. So obviously they were inseparable in the cartoon. And again, lovely sculpt on Uni. Very limited articulation again on this one. Just really the head movement. Uh, but I don't think you need. You need to be um, articulated, really. And then you've got Diana as well. So I'm really, really hoping that Hasbro are going to release um, the rest of the figures in the line, like Eric and the Thief, and um, yeah, the um, the Sorcerer. So I'm really hoping that we do get the rest of the figures in this line because I think they look fantastic and. It would be amazing if we got an up-to-date version of Tiamat as well. That would just make my day. So anyway, so a little bit of an overview of the figures. So that leads me into um, the make for this month. Um, so I'm looking to make a stand for some of these figures to kind of sit on or stand on or pose on. Um, I'm hoping to do a full diorama stand for their shelf because there's a number of characters in the range. I can pose them all together on one shelf. Um, but at the moment, I'm just going to show you this part. So it's kind of like um, like just some steps with a bit of an arch. Um, and then later on, when I come back to it, hopefully I can get the rest on like a background and maybe some more features. And stuff like that maybe something for venger to stand on so he's a bit taller um so i'm gonna do this one in parts so you'll see the video in a moment um and then yeah later on as i kind of come back to this i'll kind of keep adding other elements to the shelf rather than doing it all in one go because i tend to get bored really easily i like to do a project and i'll move on to something else and then i kind of come back to the project that's kind of just the way I work. So rather than doing the whole thing in one go, I'm going to do it in parts. And the good thing about that is if you haven't got these figures, hopefully um, you could still put this kind of diorama piece to good use with some other figures or another, you know, um, line. Um, again, you might have some of the other Dungeons and Dragons, some of the retro ones or some of the Mythic Legions figures. I think it would work quite well with if you made it a bit bigger. Um, yeah, so hopefully it will give you some ideas anyway. Right, so, um, oh, I did miss out, didn't I, Venger? So let's just have another look at this guy before we move on. I think they've captured him perfectly. He does come with some different hands, so you've got the kind of the clenched fists, and you've got the open hand there with the kind of, um, kind of, magic effect again or I don't know what you'd call that really but the wings are really cool wings are quite difficult to get in again it's worthwhile just kind of dipping that in hot water for a little bit just to make it a little bit easier to push into the peg at the back I'm not going to try and remove it because it was really hard to push in but once it's in it's in and it's done um limited articulation because of this kind of I suppose robe that he's wearing here but the legs do have articulation you can bend the knees it's just not that easy to get him into poses so yeah he looks really cool too okay so let's move on to the making then shall we 
I'll see you in a moment. So welcome back and uh, for this video you will need the figure that you're going to create this base for just for size and for scale purposes so you can see i've just kind of given got an idea there of the the measurement of his feet in a kind of a natural stance um the styrofoam that i'm using here is just under four inches wide so it's quite a big block of styrofoam as i've mentioned in kind of other videos you can glue smaller pieces of styrofoam together beforehand and then of course cut it down then as you need it so i'm just leaving a bit of a gap at the edge a bit of yeah just under an inch or around about an inch would be absolutely fine and then you can see i've already put some kind of faint marks just slightly wider than the um the kind of the stance that i've got there on this figure and i'm just making those marks a bit clearer so you can see them and so i want this to be a kind of more of a winding staircase i think it just it looks nicer and um i found a really cool um image of a kind of winding staircase um and an arch kind of ruins in um, new england i think it is and so that was kind of the inspiration for this piece piece which i'll show you a bit later so you can use as i showed there a plate to kind of get your get a nice curve i'm just doing this freehand and i'm just making sure that the width is the same on both sides of where this staircase would be so i'm also going to leave a little bit extra just to give me some kind of um, wiggle room a bit later and I'm just taking that measurement again of about an inch. And I'm just going to draw in a second arch parallel to that first line. And that will make a bit more sense a little bit later on. So you can see I've got quite a bit of excess there that I don't need. So I'm just going to cut that down and I'll be back to you or back with you in a moment. So as you can see, yeah, I've just made this a little bit more manageable. So when I start to use the um, electric foam cutter, it's going to be a bit easier. Do remember when you're using a saw, you will get lots of offcuts and do keep hold of those. I've said many, many times, keep hold, keep hold of all your offcuts because you'll use them in future makes. So I've just warmed up the electric foam cutter and I'm just going to kind of cut away a bit of the corner just to make this a bit more manageable especially as you start to kind of work with the curve you don't want that big corner in the way so let's just get that out the way now if you haven't used an electric foam cutter before it is extremely hot obviously don't touch the wire um, and it really does cut through this styrofoam like a knife through butter it, it takes hardly any effort from you at all the tool does the work really and that's part of the problem or the, the, the tricky aspect of using this tool is because it cuts in really easily, you've got to be quite steady. So I'm just kind of thinking how best really to remove these bits that I don't need, whether to do one kind of smooth curve or to cut away little bits. Find what works for you um, because you can easily sand this down or file it down a bit later. So if you don't feel confident kind of cutting a smooth curve in kind of one one stroke then yeah just cut away little bits at a time and that would work just as well so i'm going to give it a go just try and give try and get that curve just go really steady if you're doing that and don't go right up to the edge give yourself a bit of space so that if you do need to file it down you can and so you can see i'm just kind of adding those guidelines on the side as well just to make it a bit easier for me to see where to cut because you're working with a three-dimensional object you need to see it from different angles um, so it is worthwhile putting those extra marks in place 
So just very carefully pulling the cutter around, try to keep it as steady as possible. And that's not looking too bad. So I've got my main shape there. Um, but what I want is I want this kind of outer wall that's kind of flush next to the stairwell itself. So this is where I need to be really careful because I need to be as neat as I possibly can. Now you have got some, again, wiggle room with that. You know, you, it doesn't have to be perfect, uh, but you don't have to be too sloppy because um, it's going to be quite hard to hide these mistakes. So you need to make sure before you turn it on that the styrofoam will actually fit for the hoop because obviously if it won't fit for the hoop, you can't use this method. So the cutter is now on, it's heated up. And very carefully, as slow as you possibly can, just start to tilt the cutter and tilt the foam at the same time. So you're really going steady with this. I mean, you can see my line is a little bit wobbly and that will be fine. Do remember we are creating these kind of ruins. So again, they don't have to be perfect. that's not looking too bad and in fact actually those little little imperfections when you glue this together it will kind of help it hold you won't be kind of too slippy as it's not too smooth so it should actually work in your favor but you can see it's not it's not a great cut how thin it is at the top to compare it out, compared with how wide it is at the bottom um yeah not the best of cuts there but it would do the job so Again, now I want to just kind of get an idea of the height of each step. So I'm kind of going up just above um, the figure's ankles here. And I'm just drawing that kind of first line in place just to see if I'm happy with the size of that. And again, that's about three quarters of an inch. Obviously, you don't have to do it the same size that I am. I'm doing about six steps. You could do five, four steps, eight steps, or however many you want. It's completely up to you. So I just want to make sure each step is around about the same size. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Because if these were kind of steps in a castle or something like that, they wouldn't be perfect. So I'm also just going to continue that line on each side of the piece and this will be really helpful later as we start to cut away each step and um, this is going to make it a lot easier. So I'm just putting some little marks in place. There we go. So the next thing I want to do is to get an idea of the the kind of the shape of the step and uh, where they were kind of taper um, as they kind of curve around. So, yes, yeah, so you can see I've just kind of where it's a bit straighter. I've just added a line and then I've divided this into two halves, the kind of the curved area. And now I'm dividing each half into another three sections and that gives me roughly six steps. Now I do just want to check the size of these steps with the figure, again for scale. Um, and as you can see, the foot there is much wider than the step. Now I don't mind it hanging over a little bit, uh, but that's a little bit too small, I think, for this figure. So I'm just going to add in another line and just make that a little bit, a little bit wider. And of course you can do this as many times as you want until you're happy. Once you've painted this up, you're not going to see those lines anyway. So I'm going to add an extra step there at the back. So now I'm just going to continue the lines I placed in earlier all over the back there. And again, this will make more sense a little bit later on. And 
and repeat this on the other side on the inner curve I'm just using a regular sharpie pen I mean you could use a felt tip but any permanent pen would work just as easy as the felt tip might smudge now yeah I'm not happy with the guidelines that I put in place so I'm just using a file just to rub that down so I can put some new lines on top and it would just kind of yeah I won't get too confused when I start cutting away so I'm much happier with the size of these steps now so the next thing to do really is to yeah kind of create this kind of grid and particularly if we just need to take away a section at a time this is going to be useful I know it looks quite confusing at the moment but again when you start cutting it will make a lot of sense your lines don't have to be perfect you don't need to use them with use a ruler so you can either use um, a saw for this or you can continue to use the electric foam cutter I'm just going to show you both methods and you can see again it's quite tricky using the foam cutter because of the shape of this kind of staircase now, if this was a tabletop um, wire cutter it'd be much much easier to use and I, I keep saying that I keep saying I'm going to invest in a tabletop cutter I just haven't done so yet because they're a lot more expensive you talk about a hundred pounds where the foam cutter that I've got here the handheld is about 25 pounds so it's a big difference so you can see again I haven't done a very good job of this cut so I'm not very happy with that so I'm just gonna just slice a little bit more off just to make that kind of step a little bit more even. So I'm just taking another chunk out there and that's just going to neaten that up a little bit more. So from this point, because obviously I've removed the, the top coat or the top um, piece of styrofoam, I need to draw the lines back in. But because we've already got that grid in place, it's much easier to join up the lines on both sides. So I'm going to use the um, the saw this time. So just very carefully, and we saw into that line, making sure you stop at the next row. And again, that's what the grid's there for to help you see where to stop. Now, of course, this is a bit awkward. Um, you know, you could try and use like a vice or something like that, but because styrofoam is quite soft, um, you've got to be careful that you don't obviously dent the styrofoam. So I find it quite easy just to um, just to hold the piece, and it's a little bit awkward, but yeah, you you get there in the end. Because again, we can file all this down and knead it up a bit later. Sometimes it does help with the larger pieces where you're cutting away a bit more of the styrofoam to do it in sections rather than trying to get a you know a very smooth cut all the way along. Kind of just do bits at a time. Obviously as the kind of steps get a bit closer to the end you've got less to cut away. So I'm joining the next line and we just repeat that process. So using the grid to join up the lines and then cutting away a little bit at a time. So there's the finished kind of stairwell. Just going to check that fits back in place, which it does nicely. And then we've got the A to wall there. And already that's looking quite cool, really. It's got a nice shape to it. It looks quite interesting to look at. So looking at the source material, um, you can see you've got these kind of, um, it's almost like yeah, like the um, the top of a, a castle, isn't it? So I'm just kind of drawing, I've drawn those kind of 
square kind of shapes in and I'm just going to do a really rough cut just to make it easier to cut away the bits that I don't want so I'm just removing that big piece there again not the best cut but this is the beauty of the wire cutter is that you can get some really organic shapes um, it's not the best for doing really kind of straight lines as you can tell but this is just removing the bits that I don't need I can go back in in a moment with a saw and neaten all of that up so that's what I'm doing here and this would just kind of make those lines a bit more parallel, a little bit sharper. Yeah, do make sure you've got the right angle there. But it's really easy to work with. I mean, if you didn't want to use a saw, even the floristry knife would work really well for those areas. Now I've got a choice here. I can kind of cut back into that even more, um, again, to make it look a bit more like the source material. But placing my figure on top of this, um, as it is now, it gives me a little bit more room for posing. Um, if I cut away a bit more, it's gonna be a bit easier for that figure to kind of topple over. Um, so I'm thinking I'm gonna leave it as it is. And I'm just checking it on the shelf now just to see how that looks. And yeah, I'm happy with that. You can see the figure poses really well, which is what I want. That's the idea. I just want it to look a bit more elevated. So the next thing I want to add is um, this kind of small arch. So I'm just kind of get, getting an idea of size. I don't want to go too close to the edge. So again, I've left about an inch um on that one side on the far edge and i'm just using the wire cutter again i'm not going right up to the line i'm leaving a little bit of a gap but it's much easier to do this with the cutter as there's that kind of curve that arch at the top so just remove the bit you don't need put that to one side and then again, I'm just checking it against that outer wall to see how that looks. And again, that works really well. And the reason why I wanted that little arch in there, because I thought I could put the um, the uni figure, the little unicorn I showed you earlier, and put that in place there. So the next step is to do a little bit of tidying up. I don't want this to be really smooth. I don't want it to be perfect. Um, but I want it a bit smoother than what it is now. So I'm just using the um, the floristry knife just to kind of cut away some little bits. The nice thing about using the knife as it kind of leaves these little kind of ridges and marks, that all adds to the character. Um, particularly when you're kind of creating something that's meant to look like stone. Um, all of that little bit of detail really helps um to kind of add some realism to it and so i'm just using a kind of a wire brush here just to really push into the styrofoam add these kind of little dents um i'm rubbing it over all the different surfaces the corners because i don't want it to be really sharp i want it to look like it's been worn down over years so it's got a bit of age to it so just kind of pulling the brush along the steps. And then in some areas where it's a little bit bumpy, I'm just using a file just to kind of smooth that down a bit more. Which I know it seems odd to smooth it down when you're only going to kind of texture it again. But I think you do need to make sure that the, um, the kind of initial shape is how you want it to be before you start adding a texture to it. And in the same process again, I'm really pushing that wire brush into the surface. So you can see it's leaving all those little dents. And you want to do that all over. 
So on the inside of the arch, um, on each step on both sides, the only bit really they want to leave blank is where the outer wall and this kind of stairwell will be stuck together. So just to make sure that I'm keeping that um, as smooth as I possibly can, I'm just going to add in these guidelines in here where the steps would be. So as I'm working with these individual pieces, I'm not going to add too much texture where I don't want it to be. So just making that really clear. Don't worry about any of those kind of sharpie lines because you won't see those at the end. So I'm just giving this a little bit more kind of texturizing, a bit of bashing. Um, I'm using the edge of the file just to kind of put in a few more marks, particularly on the these kind of like steps on the outer wall, because all of that just adds that texture that we want. So we're not trying to really smooth it out. We want that textured look and again, I'm just getting rid of corners and edges to make it look worn down. Yeah, and any cuts that we haven't done too well, this is where we can kind of hide that a little bit more as well. What you do find when you're cutting away with the foam cutter is that it kind of leaves these kind of little ridges as you pull it along and it, it just kind of destroys the effect. So um, it is worthwhile getting rid of those and you can see I've texturized the that side as well of the wall, the outer edge, um, using the same method with the wire brush. And so just the last part of the, I suppose, the texture phase, you would have seen me do this before. Just get a piece of foil, scrunch it into a ball. Again, don't kind of make it really smooth. You want all those rough edges and just push that foil firmly into um, the styrofoam. And the difference between this and the wire brush, the wire brush is quite uniform, the marks, because all of those bristles are in the kind of the same place. Um, and you don't want those marks to be uniform. You want it to look more natural than that. So by using the, the foil, it gives more of this kind of uneven finish. And so even just leaving it like that, I think it would work really well, even with no extra detail. So you could leave it there. Um, but again, I went back to the, the source material. I liked the look of all the little bricks in place. Um, and I haven't done that before, apart from on some of the Masters of the Universe um, dioramas that I've made in the past. So I wanted to add a bit more detail. Um, again, you'll have seen in previous videos, just a bog standard sharp pencil works brilliantly for adding details into styrofoam. So just look at your source material, draw some lines in place. You don't have to be a good artist for this. You know, these are bricks. It's meant to be uneven. It's not meant to be uniform. So don't get kind of frightened about kind of drawing into the styrofoam. And the great thing is, if you make a mistake, you can file it back down. So you can't really go wrong. So I'm just adding some of that brickwork around the arch. And it's really important when you do this that you you don't want the lines to be uniform. Again, to give that impression of age, that this is actually made out of all these little bricks. You want to go deeper in places. Um, go over some of those lines again. So some of them um, a bit more wobbly. Some of the bricks are a bit longer or a bit more round. Uh, you know, kind of play around with the shapes really. And also go over the edges. So as you go to the corner of a step, go around the corner. Don't stop at the corner. Keep that line going. Now, because these steps have been kind of um, ground down, if you like, over the years, as people have been walking up and down them, 
you don't need to add all of that detail all over the steps. So just a few lines here and there, um, which would kind of look like cracks and things like that would just be enough to create the effect that you need. Also, if your base isn't going to be seen from every side, then you also don't need to add that detail to every side. So that really depends on what your plans are for this. So you can see on the back there, most of that has been left blank. I've just done a little bit over the edge, just in case you do see that. And of course, I've stopped where the two pieces would be glued together also. So that is pretty much there. And I'm really pleased with that texture. I love the way that looks. I think it looks quite natural. A bit of paintwork on that would really kind of highlight all of those details, especially using the dry brush technique. Um, and if you're not sure what I'm talking about with the dry brush technique, do check out some of my earlier videos. You'll see me use that technique pretty much for all of my, my makes. So I'm just going back into some of those little details, just going a little bit deeper, kind of making a few holes here and there. And it just all adds to the character of the piece. There we go, just pull away that little bit. So here is the finished article in place. I'm really pleased with the details, how it looks, um, the scale of the actual steps with the figures. However, um, classic mistake, um, as I was getting carried away with those details and the brickwork, I made the kind of fatal error of not checking the size of the bricks against the figures. So although I've checked the size of the steps against the figures, I didn't check the, the scale of the bricks and that kind of just makes it look a bit weird. It kind of jars. Um, so yeah, <laughs> so it, that could have been better, but I've left it in because I wanted you to see, first of all, that we all make mistakes. You know, we all can get things wrong. And remember, these are aimed at beginners. Um, this is about me encouraging you guys to have a go and not being afraid to make those mistakes. And of course, if you do mess up a little bit like I did here, you can very easily correct that. So I can just kind of go back over this with a file, a bit of sandpaper, and I can then add those marks in again with a pencil and just repeat the process, but obviously make the bricks um, much larger this time. So, you know, it's not the end of the world. You can rectify that. And again, I'm happy with the rest of the scale. And, you know, for some of you who might be thinking about making this, you might want smaller brickwork. It really does depend on the size of the figure that you want to place with this piece. Um, so again, I mentioned Mythic Legions earlier, you might want even larger bricks or a larger kind of stairwell. So it is important though to check the scale. So don't make that error. Um, but it is easy to, easy to rectify if you, if you do make a mistake. So don't worry too much. So um, yeah, I'm pleased uh, with this piece. I hope it's inspired you to have a go at making something similar yourself. Um, thank you for joining me on this journey. Thank you for those of you who have subscribed over the past year in 2022. I hope you'll continue to join me for 2023. And if you're brand new to the channel, welcome. Um, it really encourages me to see people taking notice and paying an interest in what I do because I enjoy doing this and I hope you do too. Hope as well you've had a, um, yeah, you've enjoyed looking at the characters from Dungeons and Dragons. Do you remember the show? Um, who is your favourite character? Um, have you picked up these figures? What do you think of them? Um, do you like them as much as I do or was you not so happy with them? And, um, have you got any other ideas of where you could use this kind of diorama for your own kind of action figures? So please do leave a comment. I love to see your feedback. Um, it really encourages me to see people kind of interacting with the videos that I make. 
So if nothing else, um, please do click that like button. Um, do spread the word. I'm only a little channel. So, you know, I hope you can kind of tell other people if you like this content. Obviously, if you don't, then you don't have to tell anybody. Um, but hopefully you're getting something from it. So thank you for watching this video up until this point, And I will see you in the very near future. Bye then for now.